I came to Hong Kong, I followed my husband and I was supposed to come here just for two years uh, from Glasgow and uh, it was very, very sort of unusual this school because Borat Road was not a school as such. It wasn't, so it was very different, very, very different. The classrooms, you know, the environment was very different. But uh, yeah, it was a school with a difference, but it was, I, I enjoyed it. I have got really fond memories <laughs> of the earlier days. The school itself, although the outside was um, an old military hospital, inside there was almost like a little capsule because I think the SF had actually done out the school part very nicely and when you went in it was quite surprising to see how well turned out the classrooms were. They were very nicely decorated. It had a real beautiful um, feel to that school, a very pleasant environment, lots of archways, uh, lots of brickwork, great views over Central and, um, and Admiralty. You know, even though we had a, a small place there, it was indeed a, a great place to be. And I remember um, the building because it was a very beautiful building. It had lots of arches. It was very sort of Hong Kong colonial. The fans, no air conditioning. And the fact that really your classroom was your classroom and everybody came to you. And I remember that we had to move every piece of furniture ourselves into the building. So my memory is arriving and having all my fingernails breaking because I was taking all these desks in and chairs in and arranging every classroom ourselves, which of course you just wouldn't do now. When I started, we only had about nine teachers, all right? Um, I still remember Miss Fox as a very young lady, <laughs> right? And we started with only nine students, nine teachers in fact, and like you said, about 70 uh, kids, right, with Mrs. Graham as our uh, principal that time. Yeah, it was a largely very, very like a family, a family affair. And the teachers largely knew all of the students. And of course, the teachers knew each other very well too. So there was a real kind of um, family feel to things, and people were, you know, really knowledgeable about what was going on and uh, in tune with each other. But the, the growth of the school, when you think now, we can't have a whole school photo. We haven't really got a location where we can conveniently do that. And you look in the yearbooks and you can see these very small clusters of children being photographed. And, uh, and now, of course, it was spread across, you know, the, uh, the entire page and, uh, and more. Well, I came from the UK to get my job here in West Island School. And the contrast between the two was huge because the school I taught in Essex was quite a tough school. And then it took me a while to relax and realise that the children were really very trustworthy and they could leave the room and go and get a book and they would come back again, you know. And I think that was the thing, the biggest impression that I had was how relaxing it was to teach the students because they were so easy to get along with and they enjoyed being at school. And then the uniform, yes, the uniform was not our choice. Uh, we went through a choice mechanism, but the principal at the time was very, very sure she wanted not just blue, which has stayed as a school colour, but bright blue. It was a really bright, loud blue. And that was for the trousers and for the skirt. And then it was a kind of a striped pyjama type top. And the students really hated the uniform. And the nickname from other schools was the Smurfs because the blue was with like the Smurfs, or it was a little bit like the Star Ferry uniform. So they got teased mercilessly. We were all, in fact, all the teachers were probably um, uh, jack of all trades in a way, uh, because we were helping each other all the time. Again, I still remember the first school play, I, uh, which was Bugsy Malone. It was fantastic. It was a huge success, and that was, again, um, Miss Foxcroft, who was actually head of English faculty at that time, and she did a, it was a huge success. We decided that we'd have every, every child in the production and every member of staff. So everybody was involved, and we had somebody who was um, a technology teacher, design technology teacher, Alan Sankey, 
and he made these incredible splurge guns which were for Bugsy Malone. So we did Bugsy Malone but we actually made proper splurge guns. So splurge, splurge guns actually guns which come with foam that comes out and absolutely splatters everybody in the play and later in the audience as well. That was huge fun, huge fun. And because every child was in it, it was hilarious. The parents were involved a lot more in those early days and indeed we didn't have any caterers in the school. We didn't have a tuck shop. But the parents used to come in on a volunteer basis and provide snacks and, uh, and food for the students. And again, getting to see a lot more parents on a daily basis, I think, you know, helped to shape the school as well because the, the teachers and the students were very aware of that you know, high level of parental involvement. And the, the other thing I remember the most vividly, I think, was the fact that the students decided that because it was such an old building, there must be ghosts. And one morning we arrived to the school and a whole load of students arrived covered in soot and grit with torches in their hands. And they'd actually come into school early and gone under the school into the cellars looking for what they thought would be dead bodies because it was an old military hospital and they were convinced that during the war the Japanese had tortured people or something and so they were all going through the bottom of the building and coming up covered in grit and co were convinced they'd seen a skeleton down there. Yeah, and I still remember some of the students in you know, the first cohort. Some of them are married, they are prob some of the girls, right, former students are now mothers, so I feel like grandmother myself now. They all have got children. I have been to some weddings as well of the former students. Yeah. There are no students in our school now who would have even been alive at that time. None of them were even born then. So that makes you realise how much time has gone past since then. It makes me feel very old, actually. And again, I think at that time we were looking to try and uh, create a reputation because uh, new school parents weren't sure so much about what we could offer and so everyone was really ambitious and that first cohort did incredibly well and right from the start I think the the principals that uh, have stayed with um, West Island School um, they were there from the very beginning. Yeah.